so today we are going to discuss about dna that is deoxy ribonucleic acid so d stands for deoxy ribo and the n for nucleic acid that is dna fine so this dna is one of the largest macromolecule actually largest macromolecule because it consists of large number of proteins and also nucleic acids and it also represent the genetic material you know this genetic material is one of the important thing for the living organisms and it is the molecular basis of heredity which is going to transfer from parent to the child that is called as a heredity so it is one of the very important thing in the living organism it is the largest macromolecule because it consists of large number of proteins and nucleic acids and it is a genetic material and it is a molecular basis of heredity because it is going to pass from parent to the child okay let's get into the topic first we are going to see about discovery how this uh, dna is discovered you know so first of all in the year 1869 you know there is a scientist called friedrich mescher so he isolated the nucleic acid from the pus cells you know what is pus cells so which are wpc cells that is leucoplast okay then he named this nucleic acid as nucleon okay so he was given the name called nucleon so there comes the next scientist in the year 1884 called hertwig okay so he proposed this nucleon is responsible for the transmission of hereditary traits you know so transmission of hereditary traits in the sense the characters which is going to pass from parent to the children okay so he discovered the transmission of hereditary traits traits means its character okay so then in the year 1889 a scientist called altman so he is a student of friedrich okay so he renamed this nucleon as the nucleic acid okay so he was a scientist who renamed the nucleon as nucleic acid and also he found that it has the property of acid okay it has the acidic property so which has the acidic property this dna has the acidic pro property that's why he named this nucleon as the nucleic acid okay so and also he found the two types you know so there are two types of nucleic acid you know one is dna and rna so rna is nothing but ribonucleic acid okay so in the year 1889 a scientist called altman okay he is a student of friedrich okay he renamed this nucleon as the nucleic acid because he found that this dna has the acidic property okay and also he found that there are two types of nucleic acid that is dna and rna and then finally in the year 1957 a scientist called konberg so what he did you know he synthesized who he synthesized the dna in in vitro he is the first scientist who synthesized the dna in vitro so what is meant by in vitro he did this in a lab okay with the help of test tubes and all those stuffs and also in the year 1959 this konberg got nobel prize for the discovery or synthesis the dna because of the synthesis of the dna this scientist called konberg got a nobel prize yes so now we are going to see where this nucleus is occurred i mean the dna is occurred first let's see in the prokaryotic cell so in this prokaryotic cells so we have already uh, read this prokaryotic cells uh, in our lower class itself you know so this prokaryotic cells has does not have the membrane bound organelles so here the dna will be circular 
you know so for example this is the prokaryotic organism let's take it as a bacteria okay so here the dna is circular it will be like this right we cannot see the end of the dna okay and also it is embedded where it is embedded it is embedded in the cytoplasm so which is fixed there so this is called as a nucleoid so in the prokaryotic cells the dna is called as a nucleoid because it does not consist of membrane bound then then it is also called as a naked dna it is not bounded by nuclear membrane right and also it does not have histone proteins okay and it does not have histones so one more uh, a uh, thing is there in this prokaryotic cells you know so many prokaryotics possess extra chromosomal uh, segment you know so for example it is a prokaryotic cell okay it is a prokaryotic cell it consists of extra chromosomal small circular segment you know that is called as a plasmid actually this plasmids will also consist of uh, this genes you know uh, this genes will give some uh, genetic advantages like antibiotic okay so this bacteria will be resistant to antibiotic and degenerative functions and also virulence so this plasmid will also helpful for the bacteria fine now coming to the eukaryotic cells so the best example is humans so here the dna is linear so it has a two ends you can see the two ends of the dna okay and it is confined confined to nucleus because it is we can see this dna only in the nucleus not in any other place inside the cell so we cannot see anywhere this dna in the cytoplasm and all so this is called as a nuclear dna which is very important okay so this Uh, nuclear dna is associated with the histone proteins so here histone is present okay so when this dna is binded with this histone proteins to form the chromatin fibers we know that what is chromatin fibers we have already seen this chromatin fibers in the cell cycle right so this is the chromatin fibers yes so this chromosomes or condensed form of chromatin fibers okay so when this chromatin fiber is get condensed so we can get the chromosome so not only this uh, uh, nuclear consist of dna there are also some of the organelles okay which consist of dna so where we can see this dna we can see the dna in mitochondria and plastids so you have already read this in your lower class itself right so this dna is called as the extra nuclear dna extra nuclear dna or it is also called as organeller dna so actually we can find this dna in the prokaryotic and also eukaryotic cells so prokaryote does not have the membrane bound nucleus or other organelles but but this eukaryotic cells have the membrane bound nucleus and also other organelles here the histone protein is present but in the prokaryotes histone is not present okay not only inside the nucleus we can see this dna in the mitochondria and also plastids okay in the eukaryotic cells alone so this extra nucleus which is present in the mitochondria and plastids is called as a extra nuclear or organel organel organeller dna yes next thing is about quantity and length of the dna so coming to the quantity okay so the dna content is mostly constant you know so it is constant in all the cells of the species for example if we take a cell division so what is going to happen in the cell division the dna is going to get doubled we have already seen this in the cell cycle right yes so the dna amount is doubled when we take the gametes so this gametes have the half the amount of dna as they possess the half number of chromosomes so here it is reduced half the amount of dna coming to the length 
so it is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleotide so we are going to see what is nucleotide what is base pairs and all okay so this length of dna will be equal to the number of nucleotides okay so number of nucleotides or a pair of nucleotides so which is referred as base pairs i'll tell you what is meant by base pairs also so this length of the dna will be depends upon the number of nucleotides which is referred as base pairs present in the dna so let's take an example so uh, for example if we take a bacteriophage 5 into 174 consists of 5386 base pairs and then if we take a bacteriophage lambda okay it's so a d bacteriophage lambda it consists of 48502 base pairs if we take a e coli it consists of 4.6 into 10 power 6 base pairs and finally if we take a haploid content of the human dna you know haploid content human dna so it consists of 3.3 into 10 power 9 base pairs so this quantity in the cell division it is going to get doubled when it is going to form the gametes its number will get reduced so actually this gametes for example if you take a sperm or egg so there will be the half number of chromosomes right so coming to the length is equal to the number of nucleotides which is represented as base pairs and also here i have given some examples for this length of the dna now let's see the uh, polynucleotide chain structure okay so this structure mainly composed of three mainly composed of three components so the first thing is phosphate group this a nucleotide chain will consist of one phosphate group and then there will be a pentose sugar that is 5c okay it is a 5 carbon compound so when we take the dna the pentose sugar called deoxyribose is present if we take the rna ribose is present and the third thing is nitrogenous bases it is a heterocyclic nitrogen containing compounds okay there are two types in this nitrogenous bases so two types first one is purines and pyrimidines okay so this purines have a double ring structure okay it will be like this it has a double ring structure thus pyrimidines have a six membered single ring structure so there will be a single ring this purine consists of two compounds that is adenine and guanine okay which is represented as a and guanine is represented as g okay which is called as the base pairs got it so coming to the pyrimidines it consists of three components that is cytosine which is represented as c and then thymine which is represented as t and then uracil which is represented as u okay so actually the dna will consist of you know the dna will consist of adenine guanine cytosine and thymine but the rna consists of adenine guanine cytosine instead of thymine the rna will contain uracil okay so this is the main difference between dna and rna got it now let's see the structure so we can see here so there are two nitrogenous bases that is uh, purines and pyrimidines so there are uh, two components that is guanine and uh, adenine here okay so it is a two ring structure it consists of n atoms at 1 dash 3 dash 7 dash and 5 dash position okay now let's see the position of this compounds you know so let's number this so this is 1 okay and this is 2 3 4 
5 and 6. So 7 will be coming here, 8 and 9. Okay, so we can see in the first position nitrogen is present. Okay, and the third position it is present coming to the 7 and 9 the nitrogen is present. The same will be as it of guanine to the adenine. Okay, so here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So this numbering is very very important. Okay, so because of this numbering only we can understand this bonds which are present inside this phosphate nitrogenous bases and all. It is depends only on this position. Okay, coming to the pyrimidines the n atoms will be present in 1 and 3rd position. So let's number this pyrimidines that is cytosine, thiamine and then uracil. Okay, so here it starts from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, it is a 6 membered single ring, right? The same will be coming here also to the time. 3, 4, 5, 6. 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, so this is all about the structure of the nitrogenous bases. Okay. So, this nitrogen bases are two types that is purines and pyrimidines. Purines consist of guanine and adenine. Pyrimidine consists of cytosine, thiamine and uracil. So, instead of thiamine, uracil will be present in the RNA. Coming to the bonds, which is also called as a linkage. First, we are going to see about glycosidic bond. Before this, let me draw the structure of this DNA so that we can understand this glycosidic bond very easily. Okay. So, as I've already told that there are three components that is first one is phosphate group, right? So, first let me draw the phosphate group. Let me draw the phosphate group first, okay? Yes, for example, this is a phosphate, okay? So, this phosphate will be attached to the sugar that is pentose sugar. So, this is the pentose sugar, yeah. So, this side okay this nitrogen bases will be present let me change the color for example here it is a adena okay it is attached fine let me draw another uh, nucleotide again the phosphate group will be there which is attached to the sugar so let me have some other uh, nucleotide that is guanine okay so it is attached here yes again the phosphate group will be there again it will be attached to the pentose sugar it will goes on okay oh uh, let's have see. yes actually this is the basic structure of this polynucleotide okay when coming to this glycosidic bond you know this glycosidic bond is also called as the N glycosidic linkage. So, where this bond is present, okay. So, it is a linkage between the nitrogenous base and then pentose sugar, okay. So, here there is a bond attaching the base pair and also the sugar that is called as a glycosidic linkage. Let's write the definition for this. So, it is a linkage between a nitrogenous base. So, what are the nitrogenous base? That is adenine, guanine, cytosine is there, right? So, those are the nitrogenous bases. And pentose sugar. Okay. So, which is nothing but what is the sugar present in the DNA? That is deoxyribose. Okay. To form nucleoside is called glycosidic linkage okay are you clear actually if they ask the question what is nucleoside you know that is nitrogen base plus pentose sugar is called as a nucleoside so here phosphate is not attached if 
if we didn't add this phosphate it is called as a nucleoside when we add this phosphate to this nitrogen base and pentose sugar then it is called as a nucleotide now let me tell you exactly in which position both of this uh, nitrogen base and pentose sugar is get attached to form the glycosidic bond okay so for that first let me draw this purines like adenine or guanine whatever okay let me draw that so it is a double ring right so it is a double ring so uh, we know the positions also right so the numbering will be start from here that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so in this uh, purines this pentose sugar will be attached in the ninth position okay so where is the ninth position so here it is so here comes the bond so this bond is called glycosidic bond so this ninth position of the adenine or guanine will be attached to the first carbon of the sugar okay so we know the sugar right so that is pentose sugar it will be like this so it also consist of some positions like this is 1 2 3 4 so here there will be one more carbon here h okay this is 5 okay so this glycosidic bond is attached to the first carbon of the sugar fine so this is all about purines which may be adenine or guanine so we have to be clear with it now let me draw this pyrimidines it is a single structure right i mean it means a uh, single ring let's number this okay so this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 so here the pentose sugar will be attached in the first position yes so here comes the pentose sugar so this is the first position got it so this bond is called glycosidic bond so this is purines that is adenine or guanine this is pyrimidine what are the pyrimidines thymine cytosine or urease got it so in the purines so this carbon of sugar the first carbon of sugar is attached in the ninth position of the purines coming to the pyrimidines this first carbon sugar is attached to the first position of pyrimidines clear so let me write here carbon 1 okay so there is no place so let me write here carbon 1 of sugar is attached to the ninth position of adenine or guanine okay and then carbon first position of sugar is attached to the first position of thymine or cytosine clear so this is all about the glycosidic bond it is a bond between the nitrogen base pairs to the pentose sugar now let's see the another bond which is called as a phosphodiester bond this phosphodiester bond is also called as a 3 dash 5 dash phospho diester linkage so this is a bond is going to make a link between two nucleotides it is a bond between two nucleotides so this 3 dash 5 dash shows the position okay so now let me draw two nucleotides first uh this is the sugar compound and one more sugar is there fine so let's position this okay this is 1 2 3 4 okay 
and here there will be 5. This is 5th position. It will be same as like that of that. This is the 4th and here it will be 5th position. Okay. So, as the name suggests, 3 dash to 5 dash. Okay. So, the bond will be coming here and also from here. So, what is the compound is going to come here? That is phosphate. So, actually this is the compound attached to there. Okay. So, this is the phosphate group. Okay. So, this phosphate group is going to link the two nucleotides so that it forms a stand. So, both these linkages like uh, glycosidic and also phosphodiester bond is formed by the condensation reaction. Okay. So, you have already read this condensation reaction in your chemistry. So, what is condensation reaction? It involves the elimination of water, right? So, it involves the elimination of water. So, there will be uh, thousands and thousands of nucleotides or link it together to form the polynucleotides. Okay. So, we know that what is nucleo nucleoside and what is nucleotide, right? So, when this phosphate is get attached with this uh, sugar and then uh, nitrogen bases, that is called as a nucleotide. Let me write that also. Phosphate plus nitrogen bases plus pentose sugar will form the nucleotide. So, the several thousands of nucleotide, you know, thousands and thousands of nucleotides will attach it together with the help of this glycosidic and phosphodiester bond to form the polynucleotide chain. Clear? Now, let's see the polarity of polynucleotide chain. So, coming to the polarity of polynucleotide chain, so, this polynucleotide has the antiparallel polarity. So, when we draw the DNA, you know, we'll be uh, uh, having the two strands in the DNA, right? So, one will be from the 3 dash to 5 dash and one strand will be from 5 dash to 3 dash, okay? So, why it is called as a Phi dash, 3 dash, you know. So, in the phi dash, there will be the free phosphate group will be there. Coming to the 3 dash, there will be free OH group will be there. You know why? Let me draw the structure first. So, let me draw the nucleotide. So, this is the sugar. So, in the sugar, in the phi dash position only, this phosphate is attached, right? So, it is phosphate is attached in the 5 dash position, right? So, here the phosphate is free in the 5 dash position. Yes. After that, this is 1, 2, 3, this is 4, this C is 5. So, here it is a 4 and this is 5 dash position. The C is in the 5 dash position. Okay, so then coming to this free OH group in the other end of this stand, so there will be the, there won't be any phosphate here, there will be OH in this pentose sugar. Okay, this is only depends upon the sugar. Okay, so when the phosphate is attached in the 5 dash position, if it is free, it is the 5 dash. If the 3 dash position, if OH group is free in the 3 dash pos position, then it is called as a 3 dash end. Got it? So, this is the, so the main thing is, so what is the backbone of polynucleotide chain? You know, it is a very important question. So, the backbone of polynucleotide chain is sugar and phosphate. So, it may be a little confusing. Now, let me draw the exact structure of the double standard polynucleotide chain. You can uh, be very clear in that. Okay. Yes. Let me draw the two strands. Okay. 
So now let me first start with the three dash end. So in the three dash end, the OH group will be free in the three dash position, right? Now let me draw the sugar first. So as I've already told, it is an anti-parallel. Okay, one stand will be seeing downwards. So this is OH group. Got it? Yes. So here in the five dash position, CH two OH will be there, right? We know that, and then. So it is a condensation reaction. There will be. Let me erase this. Let me draw like this. CH CH. So it is after condensation, right? So it is attached to the phosphate again. Clear? Then this phosphate will be attached to the where in the sugar, right? Exactly in the three dash position, right? So again. Again, the phosphate will be there, right? So, if it is a starting with three dash, it is going to end with five dash. So, in the five dash, the phosphate is free. So, this is the one stand. Now, let me start with the five dash. Okay. So, in the five dash, what is going to be there again? Phosphate, right? So one more thing we forgot to write. What is that? Nitrogen bases will also be there, right? Now let me draw here a D nine, a D nine. Okay. Yes. So let me draw the box, and here let me write this cytosine. Fine. Now coming to the five dash end. This so the phosphate is free. It is attached with CH two OH. That is after condensation. It is CH two. It is attached with the sugar. Let me draw the pentose sugar here. Yes. Okay. Again, here there will be the phosphate, and it is attached to the CH two. Again, it is attached to the pentose sugar, and from here, phosphate. Okay. So finally, one more. Sugar, because it has it has three OH group. Then only we can get the three dash position, right? So now let me have this nitrogen base is also in this five dash two three dash stand. Okay, so if there is a RD nine, it only pairs with thymine. Then there is a cytosine. It is going to pair with the guanine only. So, this adenine and thymine is also attached with the bond called hydrogen bond. Okay, let me change the color for these bonds. So, this is the hydrogen bond. This adenine and thymine will attach to with the two hydrogen bonds. Okay, this cytosine and guanine is also attached with the three hydrogen bonds. This red color stuff is called as a Hydrogen bond. Now, can you tell me where is the glycosidic bond? Yes, let's have the green color for this glycosidic bond. I have already told you that this glycosidic linkage is a bond between the pentose sugar and then what? Nitrogen bases. Very good. So, the glycosidic bond is here. Yes, the green color stuff in both the sides. You know. This is called as the glycosidic bond. Yes. Can you tell me where is this phosphodiester bond? Let's have this blue. Yes. So where this phosphodiester bond is present? It is present between the two nucleotides, right? Yes. So the bond will be here. Yes. This is called as the phospho. Diester bond. Yeah. Thank you.